If you've been watching my videos for any amount of time, you know that I often go to websites, right click, and go to inspect. And here we can find all the information we need about the HTML, the structure of the site, CSS on the right hand side. In my case, it's on the right, it might be a different spot depending on your inspect panel and how you have it set up. I use this all the time. But now, I use CSS Scan 3 because it makes life so much easier. This is a Chrome extension. It's also an extension for Firefox, Safari, and Microsoft Edge. Maybe in the future they'll support other browsers like Opera, maybe even mobile browsers to use it on your phone. But either way, we get all of our CSS and HTML at a click, and it's super simple. Right now there's a sale going on, there's often sales going on. And in the description down below, the developer graciously offered all of my viewers 20% off. So whatever this sale is, currently $49 for a license, an additional 20% is gonna come off of that if you use the link down below. It's not an affiliate link, it's just a discount for you guys. So if you wanna take advantage of that, please do. And once you check out, you get a serial number. You enter the serial number into this extension here, you click on it, there'll be a box that says enter serial number. And then you can go to any website and you have all this amazing information at your fingertips. Currently it's on, I just click the button and it turns on. And on hover, it shows me all the styles of every element that I hover over, which is amazing. If I click one time, say I wanted the styles from the, uh, the date right here, I click on it and it copies it to the clipboard. Then I can go ahead, go to any document and paste all the styles in. And these are all of the styles, all of them that are applied to this. If I go inspect, and we see, where's our button? Right here, the styles are on the right. We see all these styles being applied from various places. They can be applied to the body of the page, which means the entire page, but that style might apply to that element as well. And so every inherited style, every directly applied style will appear in what you paste out here and it separates them. So we have the style for that element specifically right here. And up here it says dot inherited styles for exported element is a generated class for the inherited styles of the exported element. Feel free to rename it. And these are all the styles that were brought in as inherited. These might be applied to the body. This one right here was applied to the body because there's a star which means apply to everything. HTML as well. My point is that all these inherited styles are lumped into the inherited styles for export element class and they're all right here for you to play with and change and learn from and possibly use in your website. Don't copy directly from other websites, but you can learn what they do and have similar things and similar effects on your website. So that's one thing you do, you can copy directly. You can also hover over an element, like say this paragraph right here. Click on spacebar and now you have those styles right here. And you can go in and you can edit. So if I wanted to add a border, let's do a border of two pixels. Have to give it a color though. And we have to give it a style. Let's say dashed. And we can see a border appear right there. Now I know a bit of CSS. I in fact have a channel, completely separate channel from this WordPress channel on HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. I'll leave a link to that in the description down below and a carp above so you can check out that channel if you want to learn more about CSS and how to write it and how it works. But with the CSS Scan 3, you can see how easy it is if you know some CSS to mess around on websites and see what effect it has and what these rules actually do. A lot of them are pretty self-explanatory. You have the parameter, like color, for example. A lot of the CSS rules, they kind of explain themselves. For example, we have the parameter here for color and this is the hex code for color. You can use hex codes. You can use the actual words for colors. I think 250 or 200 different colors are programmed in the CSS as words like gold, magenta, white, black, green, blue, over 200, I believe. And hex codes, there's millions of colors. You can also have RGB colors and RGBA with an alpha channel to make things transparent. And there are only a limited number of CSS parameters. And within those parameters, font size being a parameter, within those parameters, there's only a limited number of values, which means you can learn them. It's not unlimited. CSS is a known quantity. It's not like if you get in JavaScript and PHP and 
WordPress plugins where it's literally unlimited stuff you can do, CSS is limited. And for me personally, I find it easier to wrap my head around because there is a limit to it. It's not just unlimited. And maybe that helps you as well. So CSS is not that scary. And the other channel I have where I teach CSS and HTML breaks it down pretty easily for you. So check out that channel. When we have this information box open here, we still have data appearing when we roll over the site. We can pause that by clicking on pause. And now when I hover, that won't happen anymore. And we can apply other styles that aren't even in here. For example, on the CSS scan website, I found this nice little page that has 93 CSS box shadow examples. And you can come in here, look at these box shadows. Maybe you like some of these. Click on it. It's copied to your clipboard. You can then go back to your website, hit carriage return or hit enter, paste in the box shadow there, and it's applied to whatever section you're working on. And if you're finding this tutorial helpful, click the like button because that helps this video show up for more people on YouTube so we can spread the knowledge and help more people with this information. So make sure you click like if you like this video. Now, if you landed on styles and designs you like for this specific section, you would have to add this to the CSS on your WordPress site. So this is only happening in your browser and it's not applied to the website. I have tutorials to show you where to apply CSS on your site. I'll link to those in the card up above in the description down below if you wanna check those out because this is only half the job. Find the styles you want. CSS scan makes it really easy to find the styles you want, but then to get them in your site, it's a bit more work. Not much, but a little bit more. And so this page they have with the CSS box shadows, this is a really cool page. If CSS scan were to build out a whole bunch of these, um, of the more difficult things to do, like animations and transitions and special effects, and just have like a collection of these designs where you can just go in, find the one you want, click on it, copy it, and then you just paste it in wherever you want it and see how it works in that part of your site. That'd be really cool if they built that out. Currently, I only found this one page, but they're also just getting started. The developer is working really hard on expanding the functionality, making it faster and better. And under the options tab, we see what I'm talking about. You can copy all the child elements CSS. So if I click on copy here, It'll copy everything, not just of the one you're selecting, but all its children as well, meaning all the things that are nested inside of it. You can also copy the HTML code. Now if I turn those on, click continue again to get our scanner back, and I click on this element, for example. It copies everything. It takes a little bit longer. Now if I paste it in here, we see we have way more, way more code. And then we have the CSS down below, and there's a lot, a lot of CSS. We also have the ability to Again, press space bar. Let's go here. Oh, that's a bad one. Let's go to a big, big element. Press space bar. And if we scroll down, that was a bad example. I've seen better examples. Scroll down the H3. No. This one here, you have to close them all if you want to close them. Uh, I guess this maybe was a good example up here. So if I scroll down, it has pseudo elements which are preceded by a colon. You can see them all outlined right here. It also has responsive elements. Let's see if I can find some. Here's some right here. So at media is when the viewing frame of the visitor changes. It can then cause a change in the CSS. This is how we do mobile responsiveness or one way to do it. And so you have all those styles outlined right here as well. And if we copy all of these, those all appear in the copied as well. So we'll see all the HTML like before, uh, but I just saw it, just hold on. Here's the one of the at medias right here. And because we are copying all the child elements, we're seeing a lot more than just what we have on this little information box here. This is maybe 50 lines of material. And in here we have hundreds, hundreds of lines of CSS. And that adds a lot of CSS code. You don't have to do that. You can just turn that off. That's totally fine. Don't have to copy the HTML. These are just options available to you. You can also display a grid, which I like to do. That It outlines everything in red, all the different elements. You can uncheck that, and it'll highlight the element as you hover over it. So you can see in the dark red box where the element is you're hovering on. I prefer to have the grid on. Then I can see where all the elements are, just at a glance. You can have the guidelines. Those are the dotted lines that appear which aren't appearing now because they're turned off. 
If I turn those on, we can see the guidelines. Because most websites are built from, I wouldn't say most, I think all websites are built from straight lines. That's how pages are divided up. So you have these guidelines defining where those straight lines are. You can truncate the selector. So if you, let's turn this off again. When I hover over, where is a good one? I saw them with the options panels over top of it. Come on now. There's a good one. So the green, let's do space bar. The green here, this is the selector. And sometimes these can be quite large. Now if we truncate those, we see, let's find the exact same one. This is it. We see it shrunk it down. It hasn't deleted it, it hasn't wrecked it, it's just making it smaller because there are some selectors that can be literally like down to here in this panel. And maybe you don't want that. You want to have more space to see the CSS code. You don't want to see all the selector. So you can truncate those if you want to using that option there. You can choose to have HTML attributes expanded. This is for when you're copying the HTML code. There's a lot of information inside the attributes for HTML. You can choose to have those expanded in there. Copying preferences, you can copy the original selectors, but remove the parent selectors. Or you can copy smartly generated selectors to make it a little cleaner. You can convert font size to pixels. As far as font size goes, you have pixels, and it's pretty common, and most people know about them. But you also have M's and REM's and VW and VH, and you can even have inches and centimeters. There's a lot of different ways you can do the size of font on a website. This converts it all to pixels to make your life easier. You can ignore box sizing, which is the CSS code that defines the box size. You can ignore browser vendor prefixes. These are prefixes assigned to CSS parameters that aren't supported by specific browsers. So you might have some kind of cutting edge effect and it's not supported by Safari, for example. So then you have a vendor prefix that then defines a different fallback style for Safari because it can't do the effect that you want that works on all the other browsers. It can get pretty complicated, but you can ignore the vendor prefixes if you want. You can ignore inherited styles. So if a body style, which is quite often is a, the base font size is a body style applied to everything, and then that base font size is adjusted by the downstream children within the page, like the, the headlines and the paragraphs and the buttons. So you could ignore that inherited font size from the body if you wanted to by choosing this option. You can convert relative URLs to absolute. Relative being when you're on a website and you're looking at website files, often they just refer to forward slash styles.css. And the website knows to look within this domain for the styles.css file. An absolute URL includes the domain name. And so depending on what you're doing, that might make more sense to have the absolute URL. You also have the ability to copy nested pseudo classes, pseudo elements, and media queries. A common pseudo class, for example, is hover. So when I hover over, let's pause this. When I hover over, I don't know if I have any. I kept this, this site pretty low key. I guess right here. When I hover over the word knowledge, it turns a lighter blue. That's a pseudo class, the pseudo class of hover. On forms, when you click into a form field, the form field design might change. That's a hover class called focus. And so you can copy those styles as well or not, depending if you have this option on. You cannot copy the CSS selectors when possible. CSS selectors being, let's turn this on again. So up at the very top here, we see this CSS selector is a for link dot elementor dash post underscore underscore thumbnail underscore underscore link. So that's the selector for that specific element. You cannot copy those if you don't want to. You also have the ability to have shortcuts to activate the extension, activate the grid, scan the parent element. Currently there's no shortcut for that. If I click on there, we can set the short code right here. So we could have this uh, command shift option G. I'm using that somewhere else. Anyway, you get the idea. Let's just I'm using so many shortcodes for different things on my computer that everything else is popping up when I try to do the shortcode. Either way, you can set a shortcode here. You like you don't have as much stuff running as I do. And then you'll have a shortcode for the scan parent element. You can also press shift to pause. 
you see the, the pause and continue button up here changing. Spacebar to pin the box, which we've seen already, and navigate through the DOM. The DOM is the basically the hierarchy of a website. If you don't know what that is right now, don't worry about it. It's not super important for learning your CSS basics and playing around the CSS on a, on a website. But if you know what the DOM is and you need to know what it is for your work, CSS Scan helps you with that. So that's awesome. And so in a nutshell, that's CSS Scan. It just makes your CSS work so much easier and faster because the inspect feature of browsers is good and it provides you with a lot of information over here, but it's not as easy to use. You have to copy each of these sections separately. You can also change things here. So I could change this, the color from red to, to blue and it changes on the page, although it's not because I currently have it set in CSS scan. Anyway, you can make changes here and it will reflect on your website as well. So you, there's a lot of similar functionalities. Just CSS scan makes it so much easier to access those functionalities and use them for your work. CSS scan is currently on sale, as you can see here, but I've seen sales come and go. There's, there's quite a few sales throughout the year. So if you want a discount on it, you can wait for those. If you don't want a discount or you don't want to wait for a sale, you still have that link in the description down below that'll get you a 20% discount at any time, whether there's a sale or not. And when there are sales, it's even a reduced discount. So for example, if we come here, click on this button, we check out for $49 say 59%, but then if you use the special link in the description down below, which looks a lot like this link here, let's open that in a new tab, it goes right to the checkout page, and there's $49, which is the sale price, and then 20% off of that, so $39.20 would be the sale price if you buy it before this current sale ends in six days and 11 hours. And that's at the time of this recording, so it's gonna be even less time once you come here. But my point is, you get the 20% off through that link at any time, and it's applied to sale prices and regular prices. So if you want to check out CSS Scan and see if it can save you time in your development, I highly encourage you to. It's a great piece of software. If you wanna take it for a test drive, go to getcssscan.com and click on Try It Yourself on this page. And you can try it without installing the extension, without getting a serial number. You can try it right on this page and play around with it and see the features and see if it could help you either learn CSS or apply it to your work and help you work faster. I think it's a great piece of software and I highly encourage you to check it out. Next up, check out the CSS playlist right here. This is from the other channel I've been referencing throughout this video. This will help you get up to speed with CSS. So make sure you check that out. And if you haven't done so yet, click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. My name is Bjorn from WP Learning Lab. Till next time, keep crushing it, and I will see you in the next video.